So someone has put in a complaint to my local council saying that I have unauthorized building works on the property. And uh, council are coming out today. I'm pretty nervous because I just, you know, I'm hoping that they're going to be really reasonable. I obviously want to be doing the right thing, but at the same time, it's a little bit disappointing that someone has complained to council and I'm pretty sure it wasn't one of my neighbours, so. Hurry up. You better not bark at it, buddy. Well, the council boys just left and they were actually super reasonable and actually really helpful for advice going forward. It turns out the complaint about unauthorised building works was in relation to having no balustrading on the staircase that I made up to the top level on the deck there. And I kind of just explained to them that when I built that deck, it wasn't initially meant to have a second kind of level. It was all about getting a roof and getting access to the van roof. And then the staircase kind of evolved because I had to put structural support in. It kind of just made it stronger and it also meant that I didn't need a ladder to get up to the van roof. Obviously with that, it evolved that I had the second level on there and turns out that wasn't to code. So I've taken down the stairs, I've taken down the staircase that I so lovingly built. And from now on, when I need access to the van roof, I will be using a ladder. Now, it's just a seat and a shelf. Whoever did complain to council, because I think there's a very large chance it was someone that watches these videos, I want to say firstly that I know you probably had the best intentions. You were concerned about safety, I'm guessing, because there was no balustrading. Um, just so you're aware, in future, I have a website with my email address on it. If you ever have any concerns like that, please feel free to email me and we can have a proper conversation about it. You might realize that I've got some justifications for doing things the way I do it, but yeah. <sighs> Onwards and upwards. Well, I mean, not up there anymore, but you know what I mean. So it's been a few days since the council came out and in that time, it's kind of made me think a lot, not just about the fact that you know, someone one was able to complain to council and because of that they came out. But it also made me realize that whoever did that knew my address. So either they were a neighbor, which I still don't think is the case, or it was someone online and they've been able to figure out my address. And obviously that has its own concerns for me. And so I've decided to build a big ass gate. I'm really lucky here in that one side of my property is all really naturally fenced by rainforests and I'm kind of encouraging the forest along there to grow to thicken up for privacy. My aim is to make a gate big enough that it can still allow big trucks in because obviously I'm gonna be doing quite a lot of building works. I don't wanna restrict access. Yesterday, I found a gate. Well, we went a bit out of the way to get it. Are they gonna keep you in, huh? Yeah, just a bit of a drive home. Watch out, sheepies. After looking at building my own or for ones online new, they are so expensive for a gate, especially because I plan on making this one electric. I found these online for 200 bucks and I think I'm gonna give them a nice little tidy up as well as hang them. And I think they are gonna come up beautifully. I guess we're gonna have to wait and see. It's turning into another absolute cracker of a day. How nice do those staghorns look? in this morning sun so now i have the gate i need to make room because obviously i'm going to need some big ass posts first steps first getting the gates off the trail
that didn't go quite as smoothly as I had hoped. This bigger gate requires big bloody posts and um, that's what we're gonna go get. This trailer has come in so handy. Thanks dad for never asking for it back. Nathan was having to go up and for how many bags of concrete I grabbed, but I don't want to repeat of last time with the deck where we had to go back and back again. Go to Bunnings! Is Bunnings open? As we all know, I like to over-engineer. Safety first. All right, sir. Good boy. We ready, Ock. We ready. Yeah, what do we think of this positioning? So that pole would mark the edge of that post. That pole would mark the edge of that post. Which is big enough for any truck, but I think looks pretty good. What do you think, buddy? Do you really care about the gate? Not so much. Hmm. I've been so keen to try this for so long. She's ripping through. And this is on low speed. Let's try high. Oh. oh, I'm hitting something hard. I wouldn't say I was going to be skeptical of this, but I just felt like it was being battery powered and have nowhere near as much power. Maybe that ground's soft. That ground, that side looks harder. I actually wouldn't want it to be any more powerful. It'd rip my arms off. Where are you, Simon? I'm making this hole particularly big because one side of the gate is three meters long, whereas the other side's just a pedestrian gate, so it's only just over a meter. So this side is gonna be much heavier. This one's gonna be a big hole. Just a little, just a little sweaty. Um, but this hole, boy, it's just pretty. Move to the rainforest, they said. Humidity levels, very high. broken my rule because it's well after 5 p.m. but I just want to get a quick coat of this timber protectant on because I'm gonna put another coat on tomorrow and I want to be able to put them straight in the holes with this one it's the longer post as I said this is gonna be taking the weight of the bigger gate so I'm actually gonna do 750 deep in the ground so that's all gonna be painted with protectant this one because it's the shorter one just taking the smaller gate 600 deep over engineered Pretty good, I reckon, Ock. Let's knock off, buddy. God, the cabin looks so nice in this light. Today for three reasons. One is that this morning I finally saw the patty melons with the joeys. I knew that's what they were getting up to at night when they were being so loud. Two, it is almost time for concreting. We are almost ready. And three, this video is sponsored by Jackery and the reason that is such good news is that it signifies Jackery's entrance into Australia. Jackery has not been available in Australia for so long and so I'm so stoked. As the name suggests, it is a 2000 watt hour plus 
plus the 42. And it also has a built-in 3000 watt sine wave inverter. That is pretty amazing into this size machine that is actually not anywhere near as heavy as previous generators I've had. The unit itself is rated for 4,000 full charge cycles, at which point you'll have it at about 70% of its original capacity, which means you could use the unit daily for 10 years. There's three different ways you can charge. One is off the wall socket in your house, and that fast charges it in two hours. The second is using the cigarette lighter when you're driving in the car. And the third is one that I really like with the solar panel. It's 100 watts and I can plug it straight in and charge this bad boy up without ever needing any other power source. The last thing I want to show you is the expandable battery pack because this is the first of its kind with Jackery. This doubles the battery capacity of the two. It adds an extra 2,000 watt hours and you can have this up to 12,000 watt hours. What I love about this is that when you need more power, you have it available, but when you don't, you've got a smaller, more compact unit to be able to carry around the property and that's what I find super handy. I love that it's silent whenever I'm using it. It means that you don't annoy your camp neighbors or your neighbors on your property, which here, particularly important right now. It also puts out no emissions. It's sustainable. The fact that you can charge it on the go means that I can take it in the back of this ute in my truck here, go car camping, and I've got a portable battery set up ready to go. I'm so stoked to now have the Jackery Explorer 2000 Plus as part of my arsenal, and I have no doubt it's gonna be getting a lot of use. If you're interested in checking out the Explorer or any of Jackery's other innovative products, head to the link in my description below. I'll also put it here and check them out. You won't regret it. And Jackery, welcome to Australia. We got a gate to build. I finally think I am set up and ready to go. I have a couple of massive holes, and more importantly, the posts lined up to go in them. Over here, I have concrete mixer good to go it's powered by the jackery because i've got no power out to here the jackery is going to run it the whole time super handy all that's left to do is mix and hope i can get that post in place i have to admit i feel like i'm in a little bit over my head here even with my lessons from the landscape and king simon the thing i'm most nervous about is being able to line up these posts exactly so they're straight so that when i put the gates on they meet right in the middle that's the point of this string line that runs along over the top of both the holes fingers crossed if i put the faces against the string line it'll be straight we'll see Done. Don't need to do any more than that. So this direction, I have leaning just the slightest bit that way. And that's because after chatting to Simon, getting some advice for this job, he reckons that because the gate coming on this side is so heavy, he said he, even with it all set and so much concrete, he guarantees there'll be the slightest bit of movement back this way. So I'm kind of just adjusting for that. Like I said, all my actions are justified. You know. Well, we done. And I am stoked. Did get slightly short on the concrete towards the end. So as you can see, following the string line. Bloody beautiful, mate. This one seems to be sitting pretty level as is. Oh yeah. And there we have it, folks. Solidly concreted in both sides lined up plum now it's time for the fun part we're attacking the gate while we let these two settle a bit tuck at all that hard work concreting hey eh? what do you reckon in their previous life these gates 
had an uneven bottom because they were going over uneven terrain. That is no longer the case, my friends. At least I don't think so. So I'm just straightening all this out so it looks nice and level once we put it up. I'm gonna get a few of the cuts out of the way and then um, it's time to get experimental. Quick costume changes, uh, things are about to heat up a little bit. What I'm planning on doing is something I've never done before. It was inspired by Jazz and Crystal when I went and stayed with them and I saw their siding preserving wood and you do it by charring it. I'm not sure I'm gonna do it quite to the crisp their siding was, but I figure it could be a fun way to make this look a little bit better as well as preserving it so it lasts longer out the front there. That's the unroasted and that's the starting to be roasted side. You can see this is actually gonna take a little while. It's a bit more of a slow roast than what I thought it would be. And for anyone concerned, we've had a lot of rain here lately, so everything's pretty wet, but also I've wet the ground all around the area too and made sure I'm not near anything that can burn. I'm aware it's summer in Australia. The Eye of Sauron. Seemed a bit of a shame to have to cut that much off. But now, you're looking at it for the first time with me, that should be very level. Shout out if you have any ideas what I should make this bad boy into. A good bit of hardwood. Well, this brings back memories. I just had to quickly give up on the sanding because all of a sudden it has absolutely pissed water down. Second post is nearly done. Unfortunately, gonna have to retire early tonight. Like I have a shower in the rain. Yeah, buddy. Happened again. It's been raining all night and I've just gotten up and the power has just gone out. Everything's turned off. And this is exactly why I needed a portable power station. So I've pulled out the jackery. Let's get some light. And now I have power until the power comes back on. That'll be able to power pretty much all my appliances. And most importantly, I can have my morning coffee because it is 6 a.m. It's gate hanging time. And um, I'm nervous. Alrighty, we now have the hinge position marked. I chose these because they're meant to be super strong, which obviously is important on that one. But I've had to do a lot of grinding work on this part to be able to have it fit on this gate with the welded ones. Let's just hope she swings freely because I'm not 100% sure it will. And I'm in trouble if it doesn't. Oh baby. Fucking nowhere near. <laughs> shit. Oh shit. Bloody beautiful. That looks better. Move 50 mil of 400. Well, you can see 
comes through the back, so I'll cut it shorter here. But I'm gonna put a bolt and washer there. And the idea is that this is adjustable because pretty much every single YouTube video I looked up on how to build a gate, everyone's focus was on building a gate that doesn't sag. And apparently by being able to adjust this, especially at the top, is what's gonna help. If the gate sags at all, you can pull it in tight. If it's for some reason off kilter upwards, you can let it out a bit. And um, yeah, I just hope it's all worth it in the end. Have to say though, for now, looks pretty damn legit. Okay, moment of truth for gate one. First gate I've ever hung. Yes! Yes! Oh my god. How the hell am I gonna do the bigger gate? Oh. Welcome to my abode. You're in the way. We are finally ready to hang the big fella. I feel like putting some big ass gates on a property like this kind of makes it like an estate. Makes it a little fancier. Um, what's everyone think of the gates by the way? I know they're not finished, but try to go with something a little bit unique. What do you think, guardian of the gate? Do I have to say a password? How about dinner time? Oh no. Oh. Damn it. Oh. Ooh. I am so lucky that just worked. Does she swing? She swings like an absolute champ off. Look, look Ma, no hands. I gotta bring you in for this. I was so worried about getting these lined up height wise. I still need to trim the top of this one, mind you, but look at the black metal. Bloody beautiful, mate. I think we're gonna call it a night. I am disgustingly sweaty, disgustingly dirty. I have one last feature. Well, one last main feature to add to this gate, and then we're done. Who would have thought that uh, getting snitched onto council would lead me and finally push me to do a job I've been putting off for so long? That is a thing of beauty. And I was thinking, because I talked about early on in the vid how expensive big gates like this are, I'm going to give you a total price breakdown of what this cost me to build once it's done. We're almost there, folks. We're almost bloody there. Morning. Oh, these old things? Don't worry about them. They're just my driving gloves. Heading into the estate. Hi. Love my new gate. Fuck he does too. What do you all think? I'm so proud of this one. And honestly, once again, turned out better than I could have imagined. Now, I want to talk a few things because I did do the finishing touches. As you saw, it is electric. We're bougie as around here. Don't worry about that. That took me all morning and was super complicated to do, mainly because the instructions were really bad. On the gate, I said I was gonna break down exactly how much it cost because 
online, some of the ones not even installed for estate gates I was looking at were thousands and thousands of dollars. This one in total, all materials, I'll break it down here, cost me 1200 Australian dollars, which I think is an absolute bargain considering that's including it being electric. And some of the electric kits I found were over $1,200 on their own. So damn stoked with it. And I love the way the burnt timber looks after being charred, even if it was a big effort. On that front, what I did realize, this fence paling I bought fresh to cover the gap. And what I learned is that new timber chars so much easier than the gray aged timber. So for anyone doing it at home, know that it's not normally such a mission. Hockey for some reason has decided he's a bit camera shy today. Oh, you're not used to hanging out in the front. Speaking of the gray, what do you all think? Because I've had a couple of people say that they think I should have done it all black. However, I think the leaving a bit of grey there leaves a nice contrast, but I'm still a little bit on the fence about it. So please put your opinions down all black or leave some grey because yeah, I'd like I'd like your help on this one. And speaking of liking your help, I just want to point out I am not becoming some hermit in the rainforest that doesn't want any visitors. Also, please, please, please don't put me in the same category as another person that just builds a big wall to keep his friendly neighbors out. That is not at all the case. Simply, this really gave me the push to do a job that I've been planning on doing for a while. And the fact that someone's been able to figure out my address it's just more of a security thing for me. I want to say though that I love you all. I appreciate all your input. And more than that, I acknowledge that if there was nothing to have been complained about, a complaint couldn't have been put in. I was the one that didn't look up the codes for council and I promise to try and do better in the future. With this all done, I think it's time for an afternoon at the beach for Oki and I. I swear this never gets old. In the meantime, be kind to yourself, be kind to one another. I'll see you in the next one. I just realized I almost forgot. Got to put my street number up. Ah. <laughs> See ya. Ah.